I'm seeing red, and so are you, but it's not because we're angry. It's because I'm holding two very beautiful red guitars. This is a Gibson J45 in beautiful cherry, and Taylor's limited edition 8017E red top. Now, this is obviously inspired by this one, so let's put them to the test. Stay tuned. You're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Spring Store linked below in the description for custom swag, and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you listen to podcasts. So, Taylor Gibson, two round shoulder or slope shoulder, depending upon how you want to look at it, uh, Dreadnought Guitars featuring red. If red is your favorite color, this is your lucky day. So this is pretty cool. We've often had J45s in the store, big fan. We try to carry as many of them as humanly possible from Gibson. Um, and the cherry finish is one that we typically haven't had. And I've kind of shied away from it. I've wondered, is it too polarizing? And I'm so glad that we, we got them because the more I play these guitars, the more I am kind of turned by it. It's a beautiful guitar. I absolutely love looking down and seeing like the, just the glowing warm red uh, mahogany on the back and sides and on the neck. It's, it's really nice. Um, it may not be your cup of tea, but it's beautiful. I love a red SG. Um, I love red Les Pauls. This is just, it's great. So when Taylor at the NAMM show this year said, hey, we're going to do a limited edition run of some of our value-oriented American Dream guitars, the 8017E, but with a red top, I was like, huh, this sounds familiar, but I'm sure it's going to be a little bit different. Let's check that out too. So here we go. It is a little bit different. Let's talk about the specs uh, of each guitar. So first of all, we've got the venerable, the famous, the workhorse. It's the J45. It's the one that you know and love. This is just the fancier, gussied up version. This one is the one that's going out on the town. Think of the sunburst version as the one that spent all day working, came home and changed into this. Gosh, it's beautiful. The crisp white lines and red just really works. It's a J45, spruce top, mahogany back and sides, scalloped bracing, rosewood bridge and fingerboard. It's got an LR Bax pickup, which is awesome. Uh, Grover tuners, because this is the standard model, features the beautiful Gibson logo in pearl up on the headstock and comes with a hard shell case. It's By the way, it's the modern style hard shell case. So if you haven't seen that, it's, uh, it's basically black, black latches with Gibson on it. It's a pretty sharp looking case. It's a great guitar. Um, one of the things that I've sometimes in the past struggled with on J45s was it has a narrower nut than I'm used to. And yet, but despite that, I'm starting to find myself feeling more and more comfortable with it. But the tone that you're going to get out of this guitar is classic Gibson J45. So even though the red makes it look like an entirely different guitar, the sound is like you've come home. Um, it's a very nice, warm mahogany sound with a great brightness to the attack. It works for pretty much anything you want to throw at it. Flat picking, strumming, finger style stuff, delta blues, what have you. This guitar really works at it. Uh, and, you know, Gibson's sound, we often call it traditional, vintage, what have you. That's because it's the sound that shaped so many recordings that we've listened to over the years and that sound is still present in this guitar. So you have that snappiness and you have that warmth and on some notes you have a bit of this lo-fi response. So some notes zing and some notes are like just there. They're like their presence is, is already made known without them having to punch you in the face so to speak. So that's what's going on with the J45. Now this red version of the 8017E it's very cool. So the American Dream line from Taylor, if you're not familiar with it, is a callback to where Taylor started. The name American Dream comes from the shop that Bob Taylor and Kurt Listig worked in, uh, owned by a man named Sam Ratting back in the 1970s. Bunch of hippies in the San Diego area getting together and building guitars effectively. When he sold, they bought it. Um, eventually that became Taylor Guitars. Okay, so that's, that's where American Dream comes from. 
from way back then. And these guitars in this lineup were brought out with value in mind. So they're made in the USA, just like that J45, just like more expensive Taylor models, but they've stripped it down to kind of the bare essentials so that you get all solid wood construction, ES2 pickup system, all of that, um, but without having to pay an extreme premium because it's made in the US. What that results in is a guitar that almost has, kind of has some price overlap with some of their made in Mexico, higher end made in Mexico uh, product, but with all solid wood construction, which I prefer. The construction on this, tonal wise is a little bit different, and the, the bracing is dramatically different than the Gibson. So we have a solid Sitka spruce top with this satin red finish on it, which is very, very cool. And then it's a red top, which means it's contrasting with the rest of the guitar. Solid back and sides of satin finish, Ovoncall. Now, Ovoncall was featured for decades in the 400 series from Taylor. It is an African hardwood that is very similar to rosewood, particularly in the tonality that you get from it, except it doesn't have the scooped mid-range of rosewood. So if you like the overtones and the base of rosewood and the treble of rosewood, you get all of that with a stronger mid-range rather than a scooped mid-range that rosewood typically gives you. This features V-Class bracing, which is proprietary to Taylor. It's Andy Powers' design. Um, that is very different from the scalloped X bracing that the J45 gives. The design is, is intended to allow uh, the builder, Taylor Guitars, to uh, really independently determine volume and sustain and also have an effect on the overtone in tuneness of the guitar because the top moves in a more orderly fashion. Uh, it's been out for a number of years. I'm a fan, I think it works. Um, I haven't thrown away or burned any of my X-Brace guitars, but I do, I do think this, this design works. Uh, ES2 pickup system on it. Eucalyptus uh, bridge and fingerboard, which is odd and works really, really well. Um, so uh, we've been like, okay, yeah, keep, keep coming with the, the different uh, wood choices. Um, and then a solid, I think, Sapele neck on this. It might be mahogany, but I think on the American Dreams, it's Sapele. So all in all, you get pretty much everything you get on American guitar. There's no binding. They've kind of rounded off the sides, and they've done this reveal binding. So you get this nice, crisp contrast, but it's the actual top that you're seeing being revealed uh, without the finish on it. And you get a really nice arrow case as opposed to a hard shell case. It's kind of like a cross between a hard shell case and a gig bag. And we've had some customers buying higher end tailors going, hey, keep the hard shell case. I want an arrow bag, or I want an arrow case, rather. Um, so there you have it. It's a popular option, giving great protection and a lot of kind of convenience features. So how do these two sound? I'm going to tell you, keep in mind, mahogany with spruce on one guitar, Gibson's bracing and kind of historical tone with... Taylor's uh, approach with the American Dream. I, I would say this, this is a GP body, it's a Grand Pacific. And when they did this, it did start sounding different. So this is not the typical articulate Taylor sound. It's more like the Gibson. It's kind of leaning in that direction. It's not trying to copy it. it it's being informed by those, those sounds of yesteryear uh, where some of those notes blend together more than being really, really articulate. And yet at the same time, it's still very much Taylor. Ovuncle back and sides, more bass, more treble, still strong mid-range, more overtones. So take a listen for yourself. Check it out.
So there you have it. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below how the two guitars compare. Keep in mind, the American Dream is about half the price, roughly, as a standard Gibson J45 is. They're both made in the US. They're both featured all solid wood construction, different finishes, obviously different tone woods, very different designs, really, in the way that the two companies come at these. The J45 is very, very traditional with some modern features like the pickup system and the tuners and so forth. Um, whereas Taylor's been modern forever and is now allowing some of that stuff from the past, some of those sounds to really kind of inform their instruments. I like the Grand Pacific body I have since it came out. Um, and one of the things that I've said actively is that I have struggled trying to decide between getting a J45 or a 517E, a Builder's Edition 517E, which is the more expensive 500 series version of this guitar. But this was an interesting comparison today because what really came through to my ear was the tone woods that are on display. They both feature spruce tops, and so they both have that dynamic range um, and you know that brightness that you'd want, that articulation that you get out of a spruce top. Um, this seemed a bit brighter, honestly. Uh, the the Ovuncle really had more bass at times when I was playing it, and I really liked the the response out of both guitars. They're both very resonant, and in a lot of ways they were very similar. In a lot of ways they were very very different. Um, visually, the J forty five is a stunner. I mean, can we just all agree? It's really really beautiful. That being said, I really dig the red top on the. 8017 E Limited. It's a very cool aesthetic. It's a little bit different. I don't see it on a lot of guitars, which is why I'm like, where'd they get that idea from? So if you are in the market, I mean, who's not in the market for a round shoulder red dreadnought guitar? Um, these are definitely two options that you should take a look at. Uh, you know, Gibson loyalists or people looking for just extreme richness in color and, and depth and, and everything, definitely over here. But huge value, and it's a limited edition. This probably will not be in the lineup for very long. So this is the public service announcement. If you like this, you better get on our website now because they'll probably sell out and be gone. That website, by the way, is alamomusic.com. You can check out photos of each guitar. You can chat with someone um, and do comparisons on there and ask questions, find the right guitar for you. Of course, you can always call and come in. We're a brick and mortar store um, with people here to help you. One thing that we always do say is this you can add to cart online, this you have to call us, uh, just is what it is right now. So if you see this online, it means we've got it. If you're interested, just give us a call or message us or send us an email and we'll get your Gibson to you. Um, and you can ask us any questions you want with Taylor's or anything else. So let me know in your comments below though, which one did you like visually better? Which one did you like sound wise? Which one would you go with? They both play fantastic, so. I'm just gonna take both home. It's red. Holidays are coming. I'm going to be festive. That's, that's it. That's what I'll tell my wife. It's Christmas festive. Yeah. Anyways. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, and keep coming back for more. I'll see you next time.